Good evening, dear students. I hope that everyone is doing well and your families too, especially with the, these circumstances that uh, the entire world is uh, noticing uh, uh, hidden in Algeria. So I try to send to, to send you sorry uh, lecture uh, through uh, video that it doesn't go through Facebook, but I'm trying to upload uh, this video of the lecture of research methodology, how to write a literature review uh, on uh, YouTube and to give you later on the links on YouTube to uh, watch the videos uh, concerning how to write the literature review because it is impossible to understand what is in uh, the lecture without my explanations and of course if you have any question concerning the lecture you can uh, send me your uh, comments or your questions uh, through my email so today we are going to see uh, here a lecture on academic writing. We have seen how to uh, list references in uh, APA style, how to organize the list of references in APA style, how to uh, list references in your in-text citation with practice. And we have also seen how to uh, list references or how to create uh, work cited list in MLA. What remained is how to uh, put your sources in your in-text citation. So before uh, here uh, having an overview concerning MLA in-text citation, let us refresh our memory about what is meant by in-text citation uh, and what is the characteristic or characteristics of the in-text citation in analyst style. So what is meant by an in-text citation? So an in-text citation is a brief reference in your text. It means that it is in your text. At the same time, you list the reference in your list of bibliography. Is If uh, here a reference is missing in your list of references, uh, of course, this may raise uh, the similarity percentage, and if here, uh, of course, uh, reference is existing in your list and uh, it, it doesn't uh, exist in your in-text citation, it means here that you have used uh, the reference and uh, you either uh, missed its uh, mentioning it uh, in your in-text citation or you follow the reference that reference in, uh, in terms of how to uh, organize uh, the references but uh, it doesn't appear in your in-text citation. In this uh, case, as we have seen in previous lectures, uh, we can't uh, call the list of references uh, in APA or works cited in MLA as works cited or references but uh, rather uh, bibliography. So an in-text citation is a brief reference in your text and it either indicates the source you consulted. It should direct the reader to the entry in your work cited list for that source. It means that this reference will guide the reader. In your text and as well as in your list of references, it should provide the citation information without interrupting your own text. And here we have seen two types of citation, mainly narrative citation and the parenthetical citation. And we have seen in details uh, how to uh, organize or how to put these in your in-text citation. In general, the in-text citation will be the author's. So in MLA, it is the author's last name or the abbreviated title in case here uh, there is no author's name with the page number. Enclosed in parentheses, it means that the page number, as you can see here, we've got uh, the author and we've got the page number in parentheses. Or we've got the author and the page number by the end in parentheses. So this, uh, as you can see here in this, we call it narrative parentheses. Uh, narrative citation, sorry, narrative 
citation. It means that you start with the author and you keep uh, here the page number by the end of the quote. And there is another possibility, so this is also called author prominent. It means that more importance is given to the author rather than the information provided by the author. And we've got here uh, parenthetical citation. It means that both the author and the page number are between parentheses or in parentheses, and this is called parenthetical citation. As you can see here, you've got, we've got only the author with the page number without a, a comma between uh, the, the author and the page number. And there is uh, here the, possi uh, the possibility of paraphrasing, as you can see here. Uh, and here there is another possibility. Uh, you can uh, put the author by the very beginning and the page number by the end, or you put the author then plus the page number. So this is correct in uh, MLA, but in APA, since you are paraphrasing just the author and the year of publication, and there is no page number. So we have here to pay attention in APA. In APA, when you are paraphrasing, there is no existence of page number. You should provide just the author and date of publication without page number. As you can see here, so this is the reference. Uh, from where we have taken these quotes. So we've got William Wordsworth. And as you can see here, we've got the place of edition and we've got, uh, or the house, sorry, the house of edition plus the date. Uh, here, uh, and in here we present uh, three possibilities as we have seen in previous lectures, three possibilities how to place your quote, how to place the right, the author plus uh, the page number. So as you can see here, we've got uh, the quote, then just after the quote, you've got the author with the, the page and it should be separated by a comma here and you finish your sentence or the rest of the sentence. We've got also this possibility and this is called, called a narrative citation. As you can see here and the last one the last one the last one you can use it in the form of what in the form of question as you can see here so there are many possibilities to place your quotes within your in text now we move on how to format longer quotes in MLA so for long quotes that are more than four lines uh, we have seen in APA that we should count words to uh, put longer quotes or what we call in academic writing block quotes. But in uh, MLA it is not. In MLA we have to count lines. So four lines you should uh, place your quote as block quote, not as short quote. And when it comes to uh, uh, the, the formatting issue, how to place it, so it should be indented half inch from the left margin, so it is the same like in uh, MLA, in APA, sorry, so you should here indent the whole quote half inch from the left margin, maintaining what double spacing, so we have seen that you should double space the whole dissertation, uh, including even block quotes as you can see here, and, and here we have a load that is called the, 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 the parenthetical citation, putting the author by the end of the quote. In case when you've got uh, two quotes within, taken or two quotes taken as uh, a block quote, as you can see here, so all the quotes should be here indented half inch from the left margin but in case uh, and of course to show that uh, these two quotes uh, here that the first quote ends here and you start a new quote you should indent uh, more uh, both quotes in more uh, than half inch it means that the first line from each a part of the quote should be indented with half inch uh, in comparison to the whole as you can see the whole passage 
in here. And of course you put either the author, uh, but when it comes to uh, here placing page number, we can't place the page number here and then here, since it is one quote and it is a block quote. So we place it by the end. So, briefly speaking, when citing two or more paragraphs, use block quotation format, even if the passage from the paragraphs is less than four lines. As you can see here, the first is less than four lines, and the second is also less than four lines. But they form what? When we count all the lines, they form what? They form a block word. If you cite more than one paragraph, the first line of the second paragraph should be indented an extra half inch to denote a new paragraph. You should show that uh, this is a new paragraph and this is also a new paragraph. So this passage is taken from MLA guide, page 94. We move on to adding a word or sentence put in for what? to put emphasis, okay? So, show admitted, nothing can extinguish my interest in Shakespeare. So what is meant by sec? And we have seen that. The second one, Lincoln specially advocated the government for people. Emphasis added. So, so what should we add to emphasize? So here when uh, we use sick, of course, when we uh, uh, here delete a part, delete a part. When uh, here there is emphasis added, you either uh, write the, 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 the passage uh, in italics, or you put it between inverted commas, or you write it in bold. Or uh, here, when you want to add something, you put it between what? Square brackets. As you can see here, Melton Satan speaks of his study. So here the word is added. Uh, this word is added uh, in, uh, of course, uh, the quote. For what? For uh, to emphasize uh, or to attract the reader. And it should be put between uh, square brackets and not between parentheses. So this is taken also is also taken taken from MLA page 101. Now we move on to sometimes you are working with uh, poetry and in this case how can we cite uh, some passages from poetry or uh, or from a play. So one cite a long sections from poetry, four lines of verse or more keep formatting as close to the original as possible. So here you are not going to, um, to adapt uh, the MLA format. Uh, you should keep the same format as uh, the original text, okay? As, the, as you can see here, the, uh, here uh, it is similar to the original text, which is taken from my papa's words, okay? And of course here, it, this is quoted so this passage from this poem is quoted uh, in this uh, reference, okay? So when here you want to format a, a passage or a section from poetry, more than four lines, here keep the same format like the original one. We move on to the same here. So in, a, a, in American origins of the writing across the curriculum movement, uh, Russell argues when, uh, so here, when uh, writing has been an issue in American secondary and higher education since papers and examinations came into wide use in the, the 80s, uh, 70s, uh, eventually during uh, driving out former recitation and oral examination. So this is uh, this passage is uh, uh, paraphrased, but this passage is quoted. Okay, so when you quote here a uh, long passage, you indent more five inch, or what we call half inch. Okay, and you put what you put 
uh, you put the page number. We return to the same, adding or omitting words in quotes. So if you add a word or words in a quotation, uh, you should put brackets and not as I said, uh, here parentheses around the word that you have added as we have seen in this example. Okay, so we use what? We use brackets and not parentheses. For what reason to indicate they are not part of the original text? You have added something, put it between square brackets. Uh, when the reader see that, uh, sees that, he, in this case, uh, he will know that you have added something to the original text and what is between square brackets is what is added the, to the original text. If you omit a word or words from a quote, we use what? We use, uh, of course, uh, ellipses. As you can see here, you use ellipses to uh, denote that I have uh, uh, deleted a passage, a word, a sentence, a paragraph, and even a page from uh, the quote, as you can see uh, here. In any essay on urban regions, as you can see here, so here, this denotes that uh, the author uh, deleted the passage from this uh, quote, as you can see. When it comes to deleting some passages from, uh, from uh, a poem, or just a passage or a line from the poem, so you put ellipses like this, and you carry on uh, your, uh, sometimes uh, you are going to, uh, as you can see here, so it is page, page 22, then page 24, then page 28 to 30. It means that uh, here the writer dropped many passages or page and even pages uh, to keep just these lines.